How big were you as a freshman? 210, 205. <laughs> like 6 foot, 205? 6'1", 205, yeah. Well, I'm not quite 6'1". Like, so, yeah, 6 foot. Yeah. Have you been the same 205, height since you were a freshman? I've been the same height since the 8th grade, like That's the start of the 8th grade. Yeah, that was so you like were tall. Me. You were tall when you were younger than just Oh, I was. Dude, it's the most brutal brutal thing ever. Like, thought you had so much potential oh, to be a giant. Yeah, same. I'm getting looked at by, you know, the high school is a college prep high school, right? Like, there's a you know a thing they're a feeder school to oh my you're gonna be huge you just need <laughs> to get in the gym so start getting in the gym i did not grow a fucking centimeter yeah past eighth grade me too six two eighth grade never got any bigger and i was so much bigger than every other kid like through those years and then about sophomore years when everyone else just because like freshman year i was still bigger sophomore year i noticed i was not like i wasn't big anymore and then junior year, I'm like, shit, I'm kind of small. And <laughs> senior year, then going into college, I'm like, okay, I am <laughs> way smaller than these guys. Yeah, that's when some guys really start to pack oh. on size, huh? Oh, especially when you're, you know, uh, my bullshit years of traveling around trying to play college ball. Like you start when you're a nation, you're going against nationwide kids. You yeah, know? like nationwide O linemen and tight ends. Where what I played as a down safety. These motherfuckers are huge. Yeah. Like, I'm not that big. Boys that are true men. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. My 10-year-old had a basketball game here a week or, week or so ago, and they're all about the same height. 10, you know? Yeah. And then there's this one kid that's <laughs> just huge. <laughs> He's like a foot and a half taller at least than everybody. And that kid is just every rebound, just yeah. straight layups, just like yeah, just laying that's how I played every sport, and I was like, you know, just bigger, more powerful more like um i had already grown into my body so to speak so i was like pretty athletic for a young kid and then i'll never forget so i got i got invited to the all-american combine so i didn't make the all-american team but like you know there's i think there's 40 or 50 something to dress out the full all-american team so just over 100 on both the east and west teams but they have a combine around that and then there's another like 100 kids that get invited that didn't quite make the team, mm-hmm. but still got invited. I think it was 100, 150 kids. So I got invited to that, and that's where my junior year, and that's where I was like, what the fuck? This is like, a different thing. Oh, these guys are giant. Like, I am yeah. not I am not big. I've been told I was big. You know what I mean? And yep. then you go, you know, I'm going up against a top 150 tight end in the nation on these <laughs> one-on-one drills and doing all, and seeing other linebackers, and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, isn't I'm that crazy? I'm not that big. Yeah, that realization. Yeah, it was it was wild. That was the first, like, in my mind. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm going to need to figure this out. Yeah, I remember my oldest kid bringing him here to Vegas for, like, Summer League AAU mm-hmm. games. And they have, like, the Platinum Division. And then they have, like, the Invitational Division, which is, like, these teams that they just invite. You know, like, yeah. you select few. There's, like, 15 or 20. And you would sit and watch those teams play. And you're like, oh, this is. This is different. This is a whole other thing. Yeah. Like this is yeah. another level. Yeah. And I in back then too, which made it even worse for me, like the realization for me, not even worse, but like more impactful, is back then Vegas was still pretty small. I mean, this is I mean we're talking ten plus years ago. Actually, no more. I'm terrible at math. What's <laughs> thirty five minus uh, eighteen? Brady. It's almost. It's like seventeen. <laughs> so almost twenty years, right? And that's yeah. my senior year. So Vegas was still pretty small back then. And, uh, like, you know, we were, I can't, I wanted to say we were 4A back then. Like, we didn't travel outside of Nevada ever to play. I played at the best school in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So, like, you just didn't get that, like, full understanding of what What was out there. there? What's Vegas like now? Oh, it's giant now. I mean, all these teams travel. They all travel. They all play, like, Gorman now, dude, they traveled up. Texas and California, they go play big five, six, eight schools. So like they're getting the, yeah, what, they're playing what the world teams. is, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. they're playing what that next level is in high school. We never did that. I mean, shit, I was playing Cheyenne and Palo Verde, <laughs> you know, Spring Valley and Durango, like all the normal schools. So you just never had that, like that real, I don't know, impactful moment until I went to that combine and I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. Just in this, 15 years. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> Yeah, my oldest kid had a game last night, and 
I mean, it's a 4A high school in Utah. It's not a huge – Cedar City's what, 35,000 people maybe? Yeah. they got two high schools, Canyonview and Cedar. And, I mean, they're a decent-sized high school. But, like, you know, watch those kids play compared to when I played. It's, it's a different thing. Wow. Like, every one of those kids on the court shoots better than probably the two best kids on our team shot. Yeah. You know, they're almost all bigger. It's a totally different game. They're now. quicker. That's all they play is basketball for the most part. Most of them just play one sport, you know, and they play it year that's, round. That's they a do, big difference nowadays. Yeah, they you do per, pick one personal track. training, you mm-hmm. know. They, he goes it's a year round out. thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, it's a whole different thing. I don't know. I kind of miss the old days. <laughs> right. I th- and then that's how I know I'm getting old. It's because I look back on it and I'm like, yeah, that's that's the way it should be. I, yeah. I wish I could go back and play high school ball again. Do you really? So I hated it. I would, I would redo that in a heartbeat. <laughs> There's really? actually, oh, yeah. you know what's interesting too is I'm not like entirely well versed to speak super analytical on it, but there is data out there that is definitely supportive of the fact that multi-sport athletes that didn't just go one tracked less injuries and better chance of making it because hmm. it was a, it's a more well-rounded thing. So like you look at today, nowadays, like we're just talking about, they get so down this one path and they train year round for this one thing, this one movement, which leads to a lot more injuries in kids specifically. They're finding it in women's soccer a lot, hmm. the ACLs and some weird stuff. And then they're finding it in, uh, I think it's baseball and the injury rates. And then like being more well-rounded in the, in the past with a little bit of time off in between sports is actually proving to be better. I just don't know how they get that you wouldn't get burnt out completely. Well, you don't have a choice because if you don't, you're not going to yeah, play Yeah, you're the not going to be year. competitive. Yeah, you're yeah, right. You're, but, you're, like, you're, it's just, I don't know. I mean, Mike, I remember my senior year of high school, I was just so glad it was over. Yeah. You know, for, for I was just like, thank thank God that was the last basketball game. Yeah. I'm so over this. Well, that's what I started going down the path. Like, well, I like hunting a whole hell of a lot better than this shit. <laughs> and I'm, like, not that yeah. big. Not that good. Yeah. So, like, I'm just going to hunt. That's why, I, that's why I always got yelled at because I didn't play basketball in the fall because that was hunting season. Yeah, I mean. I only did one sport. I played basketball all year, but fall, now basketball. Smart. So I got yelled at a lot for that. You just went hunting? Coach. Hunting. Winter, I should have done more summer. of that. I mean, really, what did football give me? <laughs> <laughs> life lessons. Mm. Yeah. I, I think guess. that's it. No, it is entirely. Team sport, life lesson, team mentality. Hard work. Nothing like a locker room mentality. One common goal. Super, mm-hmm. super simple goal. Yeah. Win at all costs. I mean, I Everyone's think, bought in. I think you can learn that in a lot of ways. I don't think sports are like it, you know, as far it, as like le- I agree. learning that kind of thing. But I do think. It's a great thing, though. I think it's good in a lot of cases. I think it, it really does teach people, you know, hard work, work ethic. And you, you can get that in a lot of ways. But, I, you know, my experience, I thought. It, it was it was hard. I, the one thing I miss is the locker room mentality. Just yeah. the one common goal. Everyone's bought in. No one fights it. Everyone mm-hmm. understands exactly what it is. Win at all costs. You know, protect yeah. your brothers. Like it's so simple. I kind of miss like the uh, and like there's and there's sorry to cut you off, yeah, but there's like the difference between that and work life, like work balance life, is you you had weekly direct feedback. I mean the most impactful feedback you could have. You either won or lost, right? You yeah. either accomplished or you didn't. And work life is just a never ending. We got to win. We got to, well, how, when, what is a win? What is a loss? Like, yeah, it becomes the, line, a, the line keeps moving. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it becomes like, and it becomes a lot more gray. Like, what do yeah. you classify as a win or a loss? Right? Like, mm-hmm. there's the grand win, of course, which is being successful. What's successful, right? But then mm-hmm. there's like all these day to day things of, I don't know. It's just it's. Yeah, it's I missed a lot like the, the adrenaline, you know, of the Friday night. Yeah. You know, the the hour before the game, the warm up, oh, yeah. the I mean, the like the electricity of the crowd. And, yeah, I don't know. I like and I like that about hunting too. I like the fact that oh, there's just like that. this intensity, the rise of the situation. It comes together and like it just feels like it's never going to happen. The one it does, it's like man, I just that can't was, believe that. I happened. can't believe that happened. Yeah. That's my favorite part. Yeah, me too. And well, then there is kind of that locker room feel, you know, back at the fireplace back at the house Mm -hmm. whatever it is back at camp you're right like there is kind of that locker room spirit yeah and that sense of satisfaction that you did something yeah you know like i did something that was hard to do and i I for sure freaking did it for sure brady hit us with a promo all right so promo time so right now is probably arguably one of our favorite times of the year application season research season it's my second favorite second season, favorite i guess yeah i guess i think it's on par though it is, is it it gets me so excited for what's to come i like it's it's uh i don't gamble much but it's kind of like gambling <laughs> it is. 
yeah. <laughs> in the way that I gamble, you know, exactly. I, I, I put in my application. I know yep. that there's going to be some sort of drawing and yep. hopefully my name comes up. So right now we have a special promo for you guys. We want to treat you guys right. So if you sign up right now for our insider membership, that's all of our research draws, filtering 2.0, application strategy, includes Go Hunt Maps, everything under the umbrella of Go Hunt. Use podcast 100 promo code. It's going to give you 100 points back to Go Hunt Gear Shop. That's $100 you can turn around and spend on quality gear. So right now you need insider membership to go forward with everything. Yeah, the membership's 149 bucks. Yep. We're going to give you 100 bucks back. So for 50 bucks, essentially, you get maps, all the tools that you just mentioned. Yep. And that leads us right into our discussion of mm. app season kickoff. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought today would be interesting if we just kind of talked about the application process. And, like, so we, had a, we had a meeting the other day. I don't know if you were in that one. We had a, guy, a, guy, a guy that works here, right? So, and, and he's relatively – he's not new to hunting, but he's newer than, than some of us, right? And one of the things that he said in regards to a question he was asked, like, what's the biggest, you know, hurdle for you? It was, he was just like, where do I start? Mm -hmm. He's like, it just seems overwhelming. I have no idea what, what to do. And I think I get that a lot. You get that a lot. All the time. It's a, it's a big question for a lot of people out there. I get it all the time. Yeah. All the time. It seems insurmountable. I mean, you, you start to look at the state rules and regs, and I know that right now, I mean, we're looking at some – different states that are and it seems like they're adjusting and moving all the time right so yeah, think they're yep. they're changing management they're changing hunts you know they're eliminating some hunts adding others you know there, there's some talk about draw systems changing so it's, it's like this constant moving thing and it does seem like if you don't live within that day to day it can be really hard to navigate yep yeah so i, I thought today maybe we would just chit chat a little bit about how each of us approaches application season i mean we're tail end of december you know, you've got Wyoming elk, which is typically one of the first ones out the gate to open up. Um, you know, Alaska, our, that deadline already was passed, you know, December 15th. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, how how are you guys addressed? Like, what's your steps? Like, what do you guys look at when you're looking at a new application season? I'll ask Brady first. Okay. Well, the easiest thing for me, like, we, uh, you know, we launch Point Tracker. Mm -hmm. That's, like, the best way to start, like go back and look at all the other states, figure out what points you have. Like if you're new to point tracker, it's basically go to your state website, figure out how many points you have in that state, enter it in point tracker. And then from the years on, years forward, I know I didn't draw a bunch of these species, so I just got to add one to that. So I want to start there and look at all my points across every single state for all the species. So right now, obviously Wyoming elk is coming up. So I've been starting to dive into my Wyoming elk research because I, I mean, do have a lot of points. Why, why point tracker? I think it's just the, it's the it's the first place I want to start because if I don't have points I can't draw some of these mm -hmm. hunts, you know. So I want to look at what I have available to me and if it's worth me burning it this year or if it's one of those hunts I want to save points for to carry it next year and just kind of figure out how my then my yearly app strategy will work. Like if I don't want to do Wyoming right now but I have points somewhere else, I got to start weighing out which states am I likely to draw and do I have enough points to even apply for that unit or do I need to look at other units that are, take a lot less points and I can burn my points that way because so I think getting getting your points in line is probably one of the biggest and easiest things because you just got to roll through all the states that you apply for, add your points to mm -hmm. it for every species, and that was there. And the greatest thing is, too, everything you enter in point tracker instantly transfers over to draw odds mm -hmm. and filtering 2.0. So what, now were you, what were you doing before point tracker? Was it just like a spreadsheet I had, like Yeah, I had, a, I had a Google sheet that had all the states, all the species written down in a big column, broken out, and it was a mess. Like, it's literally a mess. It's hard to keep track of. It's hard to find those. If you have it in a notepad, where is that notepad located? Did I yeah. move it or That's is it in some life. folder? <laughs> and so now it keeps it ordered. <laughs> I'm a hand writer. That's my life right there. You, you write everything. So, everything. like, pr previously, like, before Point Tracker, is mm -hmm. everything that you have as far as, like, uh, the points a, and what I'm, you applied for everything in a I'm notebook? I'm still a writer. I, I, like, I guess I'm millennial in in uh, generation. But, like, I, 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 I must have been on the very front end of that because I am still very much a writer. Like, if I don't write it down, I'll completely forget everything I did and where it is and which documents it's stored and all this shit. So I have a notepad. Writing, Always had it. writing it down different than putting it in a spreadsheet. Yeah. Mm. You, ret you retain it better? Yeah, and I seem to keep it better as well. It's really? My, my desk drawer. Oh, man, I'm the like worst. I don't rem I, if you – in my, my phone, it's like, what note title is it in? What is it? You got to scroll through all this shit. The older I get, the worse I am at that kind of stuff. Like, really? man, yeah, keeping keeping track of where I put something. 
Like I lost, I lost my uh, my deer tag in Idaho this year. I had to call my. Well, that kind of shit. Yeah, <laughs> forget, forget that all the time. Yeah, I just I have a notepad in my top drawer on my desk, and that's that's just where it stays. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not historically very good at like maintaining, like putting things in the exact. I, I'm pretty good when I'm hunting, but like notebooks, I'd, I'd, lo- I'd lose that for sure. Look, I, I mean, no one goes through more sunglasses. Oh, <laughs> I'm on my third pair this year. And tag, I don't know, all that little bullshit. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a wreck with that. Why, Absolute wreck. Why are sunglasses so damn hard to keep track of? I don't know because they're not that comfortable. I don't, I don't know. They, I don't. You're think taking them off set on a tailgate or yeah, whatever when you're trying to look just, at something. I take them off the very first chance I get, and wherever I set them, who, who knows? I've definitely left a few pair on the sides of hills. Oh, just pull them off to glass. Oh, get excited, sure. jump up to walk off. You also like leaving bugle tubes. I do leave bugle tubes. Yeah, that kind and of stuff. trekking I've, poles. I've left plenty of that. Yeah, just just leaving it around. But I think that's the reason why we did Point Tracker, right? It's for this exact for sure. reason that we're yeah. talking about. Keep it in one central spot. It's tied to your account. And the great thing is, too, I can pull it up on my phone if I need to. If I'm on yeah. the computer, I can look at it. Yeah, there's there's two things I really like about it. One, I don't know if people even know, but you can actually maintain a profile for yourself, your membership. And then you can also maintain profiles for anybody that you might be doing applications for. So like my house, I've got two kids that are hunting age. You know, I'm buying them points in various states and applying them. So I can actually build out a profile for them and I can put the number of points that they have for each species as they go. Mm-hmm. And I can easily like toggle back and forth between profiles so that I can look at odds for me or them. Exactly. So yeah, if you're looking at filtering 2.0, you can toggle it to your kid or if you're on draw odds, you can toggle it over as well. Mm-hmm. Can't wait till I'm there. Yeah. Got, got some years left, but I can't wait till I'm hey, there. Hey, if you can get turtle through Hunter's Edge, you can take him to New Mexico. I'm, right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no age limit, man. Mm-hmm. He probably I got, a hard, <laughs> got a hard time sitting him down to watch a fucking TV show right now, let alone get his under safety. I kind of can't wait to see Turtle. Oh, I can't wait. Out, out packing a gun around. <laughs> I mean, just uh, the visual of it, it sounds. It looks pretty yeah. amazing. Can't wait. But I think even like st- taking one step back, too, it's really important to look at and kind of visualize all these dates and deadlines that you're going to have coming up. Mm-hmm. It's my biggest pet peeve about it, like – why can't they just all get on the same page? Right? I mean, there's so many other things in life you can say this to. This is pretty small in the grand scheme of things, but it is the life we live. Like, why can't they just all get on the same page? And just let's all just do the draws and so nobody's freaking out about dates. Yeah. You mean just do them all at once? Yeah, uh, so you just know. Like, yeah. you know, this is the month and just get all your hunts done this month. But then it makes it difficult, too, when you're trying to plan out, like, oh, I'm going to apply Wyoming elk. If I draw Wyoming elk, then there I'm not going to apply for elk in another state because I, I don't want to stack all these I hunts agree. on top there of it. There is a benefit to kind of getting some in before another one comes up and all that stuff. I, I, just don't like, I just don't like when states change it, like what Utah is doing. Yeah, you know? the change like, is They're tough. moving things around, makes it harder, or they might change, the like we were talking about the other day, like it seems like on the websites they always have different preference point deadlines, like move it by mm-hmm. a day or two here or there, just keep yeah. it standardized what day it's going to be so we're all on the same page because you start to memorize it a little easier yeah which as you guys talk it's sparking in me i mean i fully understand why people look at the draw systems of the west and consider them hard to understand Mm -hmm. you know and like and hard to navigate because there are all these different deadlines and there Mm -hmm. are all these different draw systems and it does seem like if you're not paying like super close attention you know you you may not get in, right? You, yeah. you may not make the most of your points or, or your application. Or, or realize you have to, if you're not trying to plan for the future, you have to buy a point in this draw because there's the no thing. point only deadline after mm-hmm. the fact like, to the, understand that part. I, I, From what I hear of, you know, new hunters and not, not necessarily new hunters, but let's say like new hunters to a new state, right? Maybe you've been hunting your whole life, mm-hmm. but it's different when you cross state lines, new system, all this stuff, is understanding like there, there's no barometer to – let you know or tell you if you're making a good choice, bad choice, like it, if it works this way or doesn't work, it, it, you, there's no barometer to say like, yeah, you're doing this right. So it's, just, it's a, entirely a guess and it's not cheap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not, which I mean, kind of goes back to, you know, the point you made, right? That, I mean, your, your first step is to, to look at your point systems, look at my right? points across all states. Yep. And I, th- my opinion, I think that's, um, yeah. I mean, like, really the key to drawing and getting a permit out west is is playing the game, right, applying. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we do application strategy articles. Um, I'm currently working on Wyoming elk. It should roll out within the next week, week and a half, maybe two weeks at most. But you'll have that well in front of that deadline of January 1st. But I think those are – personally, I spend a shit ton of time on those, right? If people realized the amount of time you put on there, 
Yeah, it's, it's I, I personally think and have always thought since we started doing them, that's, that is probably the biggest asset with an insider. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for somebody who's trying to jump into new states. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's typically where I push people. Like the first thing, if you want to you join insider and you're kind of considering like applying for a state, I think the application strategy article for that state and that species is one of the most indispensable tools that you can have because yep. not only is it going to tell you like how to apply deadlines, basic rules, regs, those kinds of things, but it's actually going to, I always try to, I always try to give people kind of a, you know, leg up, like on, should you apply? Yep. Like if you do decide to apply, this is what you could, could potentially be looking at is in terms of drawing mm-hmm. a tag, length of time. You know, if you do have a certain amount of points, I mean, I've always gone through and done like, hey, if you've got between three to five points, you know, these might be the best yep. use to your points. So I think that's one of the, my favorite sections is if you dive down on the bottom and read it. And then it can yeah. look to what the future might look like. Mm-hmm. Like what are those higher point levels going to gain me? Is it beneficial just to burn my points now on something else? Or or is it even, is it is it worth jumping in to start buying points in the first place? Exactly. Like, is this a state that's worth it? Yeah, yeah. And, and we cover that within yeah. this. I mean, I've... Colorado moose sheep goats one you know mm-hmm. I always talk about right there at the ver- for very first part of those species strategy articles I'm going to tell you that for three years you're going to be buying preference points for those species before you really even have a chance to draw mm-hmm. so potentially if you apply for those three species you're three years and nine hundred dollars yeah yeah so you're almost a thousand dollars just to potentially then have a chance to be in the draw and then if you go into the draw odds, you look at draw odds from, you know, that three-point level up to whatever it is at this point, 26. Odds are pretty slim. Yep. So, I mean, I'm telling you right out the gate, this is a cost-benefit analysis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those are the kinds of things I think it's important to call out for people. And I'm not saying it's not worth it. It might be. Maybe, maybe Absolutely. You're, yeah, that's maybe. what you're looking for. It is worth it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe. if that's what you're after, yeah. Colorado is worth it. Now yep. this is the benefit analysis is like – What's it worth? Can I afford it? Yeah. What's it worth to you? And that's on the individual. Exactly. Yeah. But we do try to call those things out. So I would point that out. What, um, so you said points, like how, how else do you kind of work through your application season? Like, what are you thinking about? Well, mainly everyone knows I try to pick up mule deer tags everywhere. So I no, really, just, I really just want to hunt. That's mule deer. not true. The question, the better question I heard of that is, tags. is why? <laughs> why? Why I want to do that? Yeah. I just love hunting mule deer. I mean, they're, I heard they're, they're better tags, better hunt, better species. Mm. But the thing is what I have to deal with right now though is I don't have I don't carry a lot of points. Everyone knows I just burn points all the time when I get to because I'd rather hunt now rather than sit on the bench and just keep waiting and waiting and waiting and hoping I draw something. But you say you don't carry points, but you do carry I carry points you, but I burn them for for deer. For deer. So, so, so that's what I have to worry about right now when I talk about, like, do I apply in Wyoming elk? Because I have – I'm almost a max point holder in a bunch of western states for elk. Like, I'm literally, like, you know, three, four off mm-hmm. maybe, maybe a little bit more sometimes. But I have 15-plus points for every elk state. So if I start applying for elk tags, I got to watch out because I have a really good chance to draw multiple elk tags in the same year, and I have to try to balance that out with what am I going to apply for mule deer because I prefer to hunt mule deer. That's why I still build the points for elk because eventually I'd love just to go chase giant bulls. Like it'd be fun to switch it up every now and That's then. That's what I'm talking about. See, Brady's into elk. Mm-hmm. I've been telling everybody since day one. And I did kill more elk than I did mule deer this year. There so. you go. <laughs> I'm not wrong. That's a little stab at myself. Look at the data. Yeah. So I think what you're highlighting, at least for me when I'm hearing you talk, is you you have a priority. I have a priority. Your priority is an experience. Yep. And it's hunting mule deer. Hunting mule deer. And that's that's kind of essentially how you're basing your applications, yep. right? I look at all the states that I potentially want to hunt. What do I have points for? Can I pick up a tag with minimum points? And I also try to sprinkle in. Maybe this year I'm probably gonna try to burn some of my elk elk points in one state. Hopefully I'll draw that one tag. I don't like it. It sounds crazy, but I don't really want to draw multiple elk tags in the same. Yeah, year, you I can't, I can't do the justice of the tag because it's mm-hmm. a dream tag. I'm burning a lot of points, a lot of years of my life, a lot of money in that point game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a weird game, right? Everyone wants a tag, but you don't want all your tags in one year. Yeah, and I'm also yeah. trying – so I'm trying to take a – I have to take a – like a really tight picture at all my points, but I'm also looking at a big picture of all these states because I do apply in pretty much every single Western state for all species. So I have to watch out in a way what I apply for. That's why I do look at, like I said, dates and deadlines all the time. When am I, When's that de- deadline going to be? When am I potentially getting the results back? Then I know if I drew that tag or not, which then I'll apply in other states based on if I drew or didn't draw – and just keep working that through. But I try to find opportunities where I can pick up 
tags with minimum points because, like I said, I always burn my points. So M- mule deer tags. Mule deer tags, yeah. Like the most points I've ever had for mule deer is four. Yeah. That I've drawn a tag on. Like there's mm-hmm. some states, that obviously I have trophy states like Arizona. I'm just banking points forever on. I have a ton of points there. And I'm okay with not drawing that state because I'm, you know, chasing a certain hunt in that state, but I fill it with other states that I can draw with minimum points and just keep hunting multiple years in that same maybe general area or same region area. So I just started learning a lot more about hunting animals in that terrain. Yeah. What do you do for your priority? Like, do you feel like, so we, I mean, go through and you update your points for each individual state and we mm-hmm. have articles on how to do that. Right. Yep. I don't, one, one tip I would include is like when you go through and you update your points and point tracker, on in your insider account i would say update them for every state and every species like in one go so that you're not going back and forth and being like shit did i update my points for colorado i don't know so just just go through and do them all for one state or for every state and if you don't know how to look up your points i do have a big master article it's on our website that walks through every single state how to log into that website where to find your points on that website and quick links if possible isn't it, to try to isn't do that it crazy how because every state's different isn't it crazy how some of them are like pretty wildly tough yeah it's not kind like of honestly buried. some you know of I mean? them are, are incredibly hard to, we to do this every year <laughs> and it's like every t- every year uh, before point tracker it's like man i can't believe how hard this actually is yeah all, all the different passwords that you've got oh, logins and that's you know, another great thing about point numbers. tracker you can save some of your hunter id information in Into point it, tracker yep. to make it easier for yourself yeah yeah and i would say point, point tracker was born out of a bunch of our own frustration and the, just like we're talking yeah. like what a pain in the ass it is to maintain you know your user login number or your name or your password for each individual state and we just thought, you know what, it'd be great if we just put that all in one spot. That yep. way you could go pull it up and then update your, your points. So what do you do for your – I mean, very similar to him, right? Like we've been – we've all been doing this for so long. Like I, in my head, I just – my strategy is, look, if let's walk it back to the beginning, right? Like where I remember starting. Mm-hmm. And I've said this – I've said this on the podcast and publicly before, but – I was just, I was born too late for some of this stuff out there in some of these states. And that just is what it is. And that's like, we were talking about on the couple podcasts ago, like I'm not going to catch a lot of this stuff, Mm -hmm. a lot of these, even with making changes and all this stuff. But back then when I was starting to really build out my strategy, which I don't know if I've ever told this part of it before, but it was actually kind of a blessing, not a blessing, obviously I'm pretty mad at my dad. (laughs) <laughs> when I think about this, but like I, I am too. I'm so it's furi- a- actually, let's be honest. I am fucking furious <laughs> at my dad when I talk to some of my other friends who's had much better, better fathers in this area, <laughs> had a phenomenal dad <laughs> elsewhere. Um, but like he, he would apply for me as youth. But then when I, you know, with football and going to college for football, all this stuff that all went out by the wayside. So when I graduated college in 2010 is when I started, like that's when I started doing my own thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause when I was in college in Montana, I was a huge duck hunter and I would hunt big game in Montana and you know, it was, it was, that's what I was doing. So I like, I was filling my hunting void, but when I graduated and came home and I was working back in Vegas is when I, when I started building my strategy. So I'm only 12 years in mm-hmm. with some of this stuff. Um, so like I am fairly new to it, even though, you know, I have been doing it very strongly for the last 12 years but when i started it was all cost benefit analysis that's all it was is you know the story of going as i'm couldn't even do the math of how long ago i was in high school so that'll just tell everybody how good i am at math but i was essentially trying to run my own like draws and reaching out to state agencies and asking them this stuff and that's where porter asked me what the fuck i was doing and i was trying to tell him and anyways i was like doing this cost benefit of okay here's what i I want experiences i want to hunt every single year I want at least a decent hunt every single year and I'll chase some of this other stuff that I hear about and do research on. And you look at the back then you look at the forums and knew about this, this higher level hunt. And I'm like, okay, so my strategy is going to be, I want to hunt every single year, no matter what, at least a good hunt. But I also want the ability long down the road from now to have the ability to cash in on some of these, like these things I hear about and I want to do. So back then starting, I built my, Western application strategy in five states at the time. And that's what Insider was born out of is mm-hmm. five states. So Nevada, uh, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Arizona. 
and that's where I was applying. I was kind of bouncing all these states off of each other. And it was a different game back then, obviously, than it is now. Um, so fast forwarding with those priorities, now I find myself where I have a really good amount of points mm -hmm. in like Arizona. I have my loyalty and my hunter safety and my 12 years of points. So I'm like, I'm chasing a certain hunt there, mm -hmm, right? Yep. People have gotten mad at us for saying shit on the podcast before, <laughs> so I won't say what it is. Uh, but I've been chasing it. Well, now I find myself, the first thing I do going into application season is kind of following trends going into where my points are. Mm -hmm. So I'll go back and, you know, through my, whether it be through my network or doing the old school research I used to do in 2010 about like, you know, trying to just find stuff on social media or forums, all this stuff, try to find a trend of these hunts I'm um, following, which the one in Arizona I've been chasing, which I'm on, is on a pretty severe downswing. So now I'm kind of back to the drawing board there, but I have all these points. Mm -hmm. So like that one's kind of on my mind of like, okay, what do I do there? Like I'm start, starting to get creative, asking some of my best friends like Clay Hill, how many points you have in Arizona? You want to go do a, a should we go do mm -hmm. a party hunt? Mm -hmm. Go do like a really fun backcountry style hunt together. Um, so I look at this points first. I'll go through all my points and kind of figure out the trends of what I've been chasing with those points and see where I land there. And then that'll kind of round out the rest of my, opportunity strategy because my strategy from 2010 to today is still the exact same i'm hunting every year yeah like that i'm not not hunting but i have my states for that and then i have my states for these these points i'm chasing brady strategy is very ever since i've known brady his strategy has been very species driven very species very species with species deer. Yep. i don't i don't really care much about the species as a whole see and i'm the same as you i care about the experience what was i banking those points for in the first place like what was in my mind it's mm -hmm. obviously not arizona stripping because i'll never catch that um but it's like that uh, it's experience what what states do i have these species points and let me let me play it off the trends i'm seeing yeah. going into the next year yeah and i <clears throat> i'm similar to you i i uh i like to hunt i mean reality i would love to hunt moose sheep goat but you of know course. chances yeah. are it's not going to happen i apply where it makes sense you know if i'm applying for other species cost I, benefit analysis yeah i apply where 10 years from now i know i'm going to have a chance yeah p potentially i mean same like Nevada, for example. If I'm going to apply in Nevada, I'm going to buy the hunting license. It's also going to allow me for minimal application fee to apply for any and all species as a yep. non-resident. So in those instances, I apply for bighorn sheep. I'm probably never going to draw that tag, but for, what, a $15 application fee, Why I might not? as well throw it in there and just see what happens, right? But You always have a chance in Nevada. Yeah. I mean, really for me, my bread and butter every year is going to be antelope, elk, and mule deer. And I don't really care. I do love to bow hunt elk. And that one's kind of been tough for me. Like this year, I'm kind of like having a moment. I'm I don't know what to do with myself because I've, I've got, I've got a few points in Colorado that I could draw an elk tag and I could go on an elk hunt. I've got some points in Wyoming, but really I've got these pools of mule deer points that I've been building up that I haven't cashed in. It's like getting to a point where I'm looking at those and I'm like, I need to burn them because. Mm -hmm. You know, these are points that I'm just sitting there, and if I build above and beyond kind of what I've got, it's not really going to, you know, move the needle for me in the states that I've got them in. So, I, for me, it doesn't really matter what species. Could be, you know, elk, could be mule deer, could be antelope. I really want to utilize, my, this is my priority, get the best bang, best hunt for my points, yep. mm -hmm. regardless of That's species. That's definitely my strategy, yep. too. Yeah. For similar. the point level I'm sitting at, what is, what's the best opportunity? The, the best opportunity, best yep. hunt that you can yep. get. Um you bring up a point here a minute ago, like, do you want to draw multiple tags, multiple good tags in one year? Like, yeah. what's your take on that? I think it's hard. I think it honestly is very difficult to I devote look at, a lot of time on those. I look at turn back rules. Yeah, first. right. Because, <clears throat> I mean, yep. with the, the states that have good turn back rules and all that, yep. I'll, if I draw them all one year, cool. Because then I can kind of mm -hmm. see how things are shaking out, spend some time, see what's going on, see what one I want, turn the other ones in. So I do... You know, you do have the opportunity to turn them back in, but like, definitely aren't going to hunt them all in the same year. That's for sure. Or yeah. At least I wouldn't. And then I worry about too if the turn back thing only allows me to keep my point and not gain one. Correct. Then I'm going to be behind a year. So Correct. I'm thinking like, so is I that worth it that. in the long run, or I just buy a point this year and not exactly. risk it because yep. I might have this other tag. That's what I look at in that in that stuff. Why not keep both and just hunt both both permits? Like, why don't you do that? Sometimes, but like, well. <laughs> <laughs> when you, we have so many years invested in those points, it's now become a dream hunt. Like, I may, yeah. may never catch that the number hunt one, again. The number one decision maker in all of life, time and money. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, that's that's what it is for me. 
Yeah, I always feel like this, and this has kind of come with age. I've I've done both. I've drawn a permit, and I've hunted it really hard for you know consistence ten days, for example. And then on other years, I've had maybe two or three hunts, and I've put four days or five days or a weekend and a Monday, you know, put together. Mm-hmm. And, like, the older I get, the more I'm finding that, like, those hunts that I can put consecutive days, two weeks, ten days, mm-hmm. I'm just so much more satisfied with that experience at the end of it than I am with, like, trying to piecemeal different hunts yeah. together. And, yeah. and I love boots on the ground scouting. Like, if I can Me go too. to one place and just Spend hone in time. everything, know yep. everything about that unit, road access, where the animals are, what they're doing, what people are doing. It's information gathering, right? Yeah. So, like, so much more days rewarding. And you have that back-to-back day of you're on the path of the changes daily rather than going there for three days, going home for 10 days, coming back for three days. You lost those first three days of knowledge. You've yep. lost the tale of what the changes are now, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. Those long stay hunts I've always been more successful on, always. Yeah, and I would rather have one good tag per year, you know, than, than try to spread out my time and Agreed. stress. Do you guys get stressed out? Like if you draw a good permit, let's say you've got a good meal there. You've got, I don't know how many points you got in Arizona, but let's say you've got 12, 13, 14, right? I have 14. 14. <laughs> let's say you have 14. Do you stress about that hunt? Like, yeah. Yeah. I do. Because you've got 14 years into it, right? Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I got into this for this hunt. For that experience. Mm-hmm. For, this, for this one I was chasing, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stress. That, we did a – Scott and I did a film on the Nevada elk hunt, right? Yeah. That, that I took me 14 yeah, that's years right. to draw. Um, my dad did apply me in the state of Nevada, so thank you for that. But <laughs> nowhere else. So Other than that, you were a terrible Pretty father. Pretty <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> pretty frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I ended up drawing that tag with 14 points and it was the only hunt I wanted in my home state, Nevada. Mm-hmm. I like Nevada's draw system. Love the preference point system. You know, we don't have the game to facilitate a lot of some of what this other, what these other states do, but man, it's kind of, kind of chaps my ass that you're in such a lockout period. Yeah. You're in a elk. waiting period, right? Yeah. yeah. You're in a seven year. You, if you kill, you're in a mm-hmm. seven year waiting period. So like talk about stress took me 14 years and now i can't even apply again for another seven years before i start earning those 14 points back right so 21 years for the next time i have the same amount of points so anyways yeah when i drew that tag i was immediately stressed out that lucky asshole draw with (laughs) drew with four points (laughs) yeah Yeah. a gimme you know a total gimme now he's locked out for seven years though too Mm -hmm. but it's a little different it's different you know when you kind of get that freebie and, and, you know, I've spent a ton of time where this tag was. I've hunted with a lot of different people. And the stress that comes with it sometimes, in my opinion, isn't worth it. And that's why I appreciate the burn strategy. Mm-hmm. Just turn them and burn them. And that's where, uh, what I use majority of the other states for. Where it makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's one thing I would also suggest is in relation to t- when you're evaluating your hunts um, for the number of points that you've got in a state. And I'll give you an example. So... Colorado elk. I don't know how many people build points for Colorado elk, but if you're not, I highly suggest it. <laughs> you know, agree. You know, they have a great o- over-the-counter opportunity right now, but I also think just like in a few points, you know, you can go on an elk hunt. And they got great first rifle muzzle load. Yeah, archery. Even a lot of those units have got uh, draw archery tags, and yeah. they don't take a lot of points to draw. But I would say, I don't know how many people actually look at the odds and build points above and beyond. And here's an example. So I've got eight, right? That's a good pile of points. It's decent for, yeah, but here's the thing is like I'm getting into a point where there's a couple units that I'm within striking distance, but they have been jumping, you Mm -hmm. know, point creep, and we'll talk about it here in a sec. But That's what's happened to me in Arizona too, by the way. Yeah, they keep leaping those two hunts, but then if I look at the other hunts available to me that I would like to hunt that are, you know, archery hunts, I'm four, five, six points up on what it would take to draw that tag currently. So I'm essentially yeah. giving up five or six points, right, that yeah. I could have drawn that tag five, five or years six ago. Five years. It's years ago. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's years. easy to, it's easy it's to easy talk to say points. points. Yeah, it is. Right. It's yeah, We're talking years. Years yeah, of your life. That's five years you have over what you need. Ex- yep. Exactly. Essentially, five years wasted and, you, you know, could have money. Been build those points back up again yeah. and go and hunt twice. I could have hunted it twice. So that's, that's one of those things I think we call them out in the application strategy articles, but like as, as people are evaluating their draw odds and the number of points they have, um, you know, burn points where it makes sense. Where it makes sense, yep. Just like we're saying. Yeah. Certain state states like, to me are dream states where I'm fine building them because I know eventually I'll probably draw that tag. Mm-hmm. If not, I have other hunts I can fill it with in the meantime. Yep. yep. Like my dad's side of your story is even worse. My dad, I think, now has 21 <laughs> points in Colorado for elk. Oh, oh. 
you know, he's chasing that northwest corner like yeah, everyone was back in the day. But he's I mean, so at that point level, you've only got a couple to, to choose. Yeah, to he's, so, he's so far over Everything the else. points. But he'd have to give up a ton now to go hunting. He could have yeah. hunted that multiple times. And uh, this was three, four years ago, and I'm not sure what it is now. But literally back in the day, I calculated it out for my dad. I was like, Dad, you can't keep doing this. You mm-hmm. don't realize how the draw works. You will theoretically never draw if everything is the same. Non-resident of Colorado, he's not going to. He's not. Yeah. What was he going to draw to? He's 135 years old. If the system worked out where he finally at, was at the top point. Holder. The preference point system of Colorado. Yeah, like which essentially would, locked him out until he got there. Yeah, yeah, so he really will never obtain that in his life, and he needs to change the thing. And now he's going to burn his points probably this year, or next year, on a hunt that he could have. You know, drawn a long time 14 ago. 14 or 10. Yeah. At the and he has time. a pile of points and he just burned those. So that's years <laughs> and that's yeah. more important than what the money cost at that point in his life. Like and that's why staying up on this stuff is, I mean, that's what I think is the most important is like following these trends, tag quotas, harvest success. Mm-hmm. And is it like all, all these trends that you can kind of, you can get a feel for the way it's going. All right. Am I, am I chasing something that now isn't worth, right? Worth meaning it's up entirely up to the individual. Like, should I change my strategy now? It's like it's an ever-changing thing. Yeah, yeah. And, he's, an and he's lucky with elk. There's other options. But if you were a guy who was heavily invested in like sheep in Wyoming, and now they went to the oh, ninety yeah. ten. Yeah, that's tough. Now you were going to obtain it maybe in five years. Now it could be fifteen, twenty years mm-hmm. because now it's ninety ten. Mm-hmm. Which. Yep. Do you continue with it down that path and hope you draw it before you're too old to hunt, or do you bounce out and put that money somewhere else? Bounce. <laughs> yeah bounce, bounce. <laughs> i mean i don't know that's what i would do yeah it's tough so you, man things you gotta think about <laughs> yeah so i guess going back to the priority was, which is kind of the second point that i would make you know update your points know what you've got for preference and bonus points across the states um second set your priority what is your priority in brady's yep. case it's a species based thing he wants to have mule deer tags every year and then maybe he's going to burn some elk points in one state we're kind of an opposite spectrum we you have a lot of mule deer points and i got a lot I of know. points you want to trade i think we need a party out like so that's, that's where my mind starts to go which is like mm-hmm. if i if i can't get what i'm after and the the point creeps jumping and now the trend is kind of yep. not you I know, know quote unquote here. worth it to me now the immediate thing i do is start calling best friends how many points you got you want to borrow some of mine let's go on the sun together yep. mm-hmm. like so i could have drawn this tag three years ago and i chose not to why don't we jump in together now? Like, yeah. if we can hit this point level, you can use some of mine. Let's go hunt this together and and that's instead of me just chasing this point creep on a downtrend of a unit. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a great strategy. That's, but I don't that's where my mind goes mm-hmm. consistently. There's all these little... I don't. I don't know if I'd call them loopholes. They're they're just things that exist, like it's group just applications. Part of the game. Just yeah. it's, it's part, part of, of the game. game. I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not up on those and yeah. you're not utilizing Agreed. them. You know, like group applications. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing more fun to me than hunting with my brother, dad, or best friends, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's as good as it gets. Now, would I take an Arizona strip tag, Arizona strip tag on my own? Of course. <laughs> I mean, let's, yeah. I love everyone, but let's, Twist not, my arm. let's yeah. not get crazy. Yeah. Would I take that by myself? Yeah, of course I would. But, like, as the game changes and strategy is kind of the ebbs and flows of it, it's like, all right, well, now, all right, let's turn this into – a best friend hunt, a dad hunt, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of That's stuff. That's exactly what I'm doing in Wyoming. I have nine points for antelope. Yeah, so I, could draw a, I could draw a bomber unit by myself, mm-hmm. but I want to carry my dad in and go, go on, on a really fun together. hunt together. Yeah. And have him shoot one of his biggest antelope ever yep. in a, you know, mediocre unit. I could obviously go for something higher, but I'm not going to be selfish, and I just want to hunt with my dad again. You're going to – I mean, at that rate, you're still going to draw a great tag. Still going to draw a great tag because yeah. he also has now quite a few points But because yeah, I told him to start a not the, you know, the name brand, mm-hmm. so yeah, to speak, kind of a tag. Same thing yeah. I do with my brothers, too. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say pick your priority, whether that's species, whether it's, you know, like Lorenzo and I, and, and kind of trying to utilize the points to the best of their ability for whatever the species is. Going into that current year. Going into that current year. Yeah, make the most of the points that you've got regardless of species. Yeah. And don't um, be afraid to change the strategy. Like, yeah, I've been chasing Arizona for 14 years for one reason. Yeah. And it, it's a hard pill to swallow, but it's like it, it's not worth it now. Yeah. It's literally not worth it. So, like, let's change it. What do you do for people that don't have any points? I mean, there's a lot of people. That's that what I was trying to speak to in the beginning. Like, it, it's still fairly fresh for me, right? It's 2010. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it is sitting down cost-benefit analysis on each one of these states. It is, it's, can be overwhelming, overwhelming. Completely fucking shameless plug here. But Insider, that's, that's this is what it was bred out of. That's why mm-hmm. Insider is so meaningful, especially to somebody trying to jump in and do this cost-benefit analysis of like, all right, I'm jumping in this year. What's, what am I doing? What's my go-to, right? Like I want to hunt this year. Cool. Here's all your over the counters. Here's your zero points. Configure all that out. And then you can really start to understand these states, their 
you know, mid-level average opportunities, they're high tier level opportunities. What's going to take to get there? It, it, I wish, I wish we had it back when I was doing this in 2010. That's mm-hmm. what it's bred out of. Yeah. Yeah. Are there hunts that people can go on with no points? 100%. <laughs> Quite <laughs> like a few. There is, there is so much, like we always say about the opportunity in the mm-hmm. West and, you know, people say more people are applying. It's getting harder to draw certain tags, but there is a, still a ton of opportunity. You have all sorts of tags you can draw second choice. And gain a point. Yeah. Yeah. There's still that. There's a, there's a hundred percent draw p- units that you can draw a tag this year to go hunting. There's a, still over the counter stuff. Yep. There's a lot of low opportunity things out there. Yeah. Some people might say the low opportunity for a reason, but you're still hunting. Do you think if you had zero points wanted wanting to get into hunting this year, do you guys feel like you had to be proficient in all three weapon types? It's going to definitely benefit you in the I long think run. So. Especially that archery and muzzleloader, how they're a little yeah. easier to obtain. Like, if you want to be a multi-weapon hunter, like, it's going to benefit you big time rather than just sticking yeah. out with the rifle and waiting. And the, re- the reason I ask is some of the advice that I hand out to family, friends, and people who have seen Go Hunt know me want to get into it. They have families now. They want more experiential type things with their families. I tell them, my personal opinion, the best thing you could do is be proficient in weapon types mm-hmm. and just kind of just put your tentacles in all the pools. Mm-hmm. Get, it, get, it all, get them as far out in there as you possibly can. I do think you can hunt just rifle. I do think there's opportunity yeah. for zero points that I think it goes up quite substanti- substantially if you're proficient you know, in all three weapon types. What do you, what do you say, tell someone who has zero points and is looking to get in the West? Yeah, I tell them absolutely. I mean, if you want to go hunting, there's definitely hunts that you can do with no points, but apply and buy points where it makes sense now yep. start cost benefit analysis and, and on what not, you want out of that state yeah not just one state buy them in every state that it makes sense so it doesn't take that many years for you just buying points and then going on opportunity type of hunts in a state like colorado or idaho or even utah for that matter you know maybe you go hunt spike elk or any yeah. bull units in utah yeah. right um, it doesn't take that many years of doing those types of hunts and then building points in some of these other states to then you put yourself into a position where you can draw a tag every year in a different state yep. for a different species and go on a pretty damn good hunt. Have that multi-year strategy. Yeah. So I would say buy points, apply for points where it makes sense. And in most cases, it does make sense in every state for, especially for deer, elk, and antelope. And mm-hmm. then, you know, you get into the big five, you know, those once in a lifetime type species, maybe not just depends on what you've got for you know a checkbook but um i'll tell you though if you do get into hunting and you don't do that 10 years from now when you get hit by the hunting bug pretty hard you're gonna be pissed you didn't start oh, buying those oh points. Yeah. i'm pissed that i didn't i mean i could have <laughs> when i was in high school i could have bought a lifetime deer license in my home state of utah for yeah. 500 bucks and, and i was like this is asinine yeah. 500 for a deer tag for my life get bent you know yeah. like i can buy that at my local gas station every year and now now i haven't had a deer tag in my home state for four years you know mm-hmm. be pretty pretty sick to have a lifetime yeah. deer tag. <laughs> no that's just one example but you, yeah i mean to the same point you're gonna wish that you had for sure and this, this is where too i think people who live in some of these states that have so much opportunity still need to be looking outside their home state for the future like if you live in montana mm-hmm. wyoming you can hunt every single year over the counter for all these there's so much opportunity there so why would you ever leave that state a lot of my friends think that all the time they don't build points anywhere else Mm -hmm. but it's like eventually down the road you might have some more free time you might want to go venture off and try something new or a job takes you somewhere else a different state now you don't have any points built up in that state like you just never know what your future is going to hold how addicted to hunting you're going to get and wish you would have built points back in the day when you can even though your state's so great things can change in that state and just be fairly generalized statement here but if you are just buying points it isn't it relatively not that expensive, right? Like it's comparatively true. to the rest of of hunting and applications. Mm-hmm. If you just go into some of these states, just buying points for if you do live in a state, you know, like Wyoming, Montana, where you can get taken care of. It's relatively cheap to buy these points and you know, maybe ten years from now you're bored of hunting the same or you're bored of hunting your home state. Now you have like this swath of points to Yeah, and I can go crazy for a yeah, couple years. And you were hunting the whole time in between. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there's no reason not to. Yeah, but going back, I do think you can hunt with no points. I mean, there's a lot of archery hunts in Colorado that are over-the-counter, second, third rifle season elk over-the-counter. There's a bunch of units that you can draw with no points, whether that's muzzleloader rifle or archery. Um, 
you know, there's Utah's got the spike hunt. They've got any bull units. They just opened up five additional any bull units this year, and those might be decent for a few years before they yep. kind of get shot out. But I think the spike hunt in Utah is a lot of fun. I know a lot of people that do that, and I mean it's just an opportunity to get out and go hunting. Yeah. Um, which which again really showcases the power of insider. Like we say yeah. it all the time, but like it literally shows you all the opportunities in the West from whatever you want. You want an antelope, doe antelope hunt, cow elk, spike elk. Like we show that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And I typically what I tell people, if you're not an insider or, you you know, you are a member, one of the easiest ways to find those types of hunts is just to pull up uh, filtering 2.0, pick the state, pick the species you're interested in. Hit the drop down menu on the far right that's the select season. And within that select season drop down menu, you've got uh, all your different seasons. And if there is an over the counter option there, it's going to identify it right there. Yep. So you just click on, you know, for example, archery over the counter, elk, Colorado. It's going to show you all the units where those are available. Yeah. And it's fun just to jump on there too. Even if you're thinking about going to the states, I mean, you just jump on there, play with the filter, start seeing mm-hmm. what opportunity it is, what the point level is for those states, what, you know, Manipulate all those filters are there for a reason because they're very powerful to quickly mm-hmm. narrow down a unit because it is a daunting task to look at a state and be like, okay, where do I start from here? Yeah. There's 100 whatever plus units. How do I narrow it down to where I want to go and what I actually can obtain? Because if you open up a regulation book, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not really going to do you much besides saying, hey, this is season dates. Maybe here's, you know, tag numbers, that sort of thing. But like, how do I go about getting that tag? Yeah, it's Greek. Yeah, that's why, you know, like we said, like we can't harp on application strategies and the power that is in there enough like even just diving down to some of those like graphics that we build in there mm-hmm. like those are graphics and stuff that you won't find anywhere else on the, in, the insider product but those app strategies and i even go back and read previous years one i want to see you know what was trending through there what we're kind of talking about what what the numbers are like so we always do those herd population numbers and app strategies and dive into different you know graphics and whatever else in there to see what those are like you can even like right now, even though we don't have some of these states, you know, live yet app strategies because there's, the rules and regs aren't set yeah. for the state. Like I could go back right now, read Colorado's from last year to start kind of preparing my Colorado strategy for this year. Mm-hmm. Especially all the other insider only articles that we have too. Like, geez, you can jump on there and yeah, read you can for, you can go down rabbit holes. There's a big giant rabbit hole. One thing I will say, um, a lot of this is going to require some effort. It definitely does. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it, I, I hear from people and they'll say, it's, you know, I see all this. I see all the tools. I see, you know, the application strategy articles. I see filtering 2.0. I see draw odds. I, I still don't, you know, I don't yeah. know what to do. Um, it's it's still work. Like, you still got to dive in and yep. you've got to do some research on your own, right? Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, I typically tell people, start with an application strategy article. Read through that first page two pages kind of get an idea of what that whole state is about and then dive down some of these other rabbit holes yeah d- jump over to a state profile uh, like i don't think a lot of people realize we have the state profiles yeah. too that also gives a lot of information mm-hmm. gives all the cost breakdown jump into a species profile learn a little bit, a little bit more about yeah. that species in that state but it's going to take some effort it's going to take some diving in and playing around on there but that's what the winner's for like we're all itching yeah. cabin fever cabin fever you want to check out some things and learn more and well, if you can't hunt, don't you want to think about hunting? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I do. Yeah, and I love application season. It's like Brady said. I I love I, the, love it. I like the game. I, I do. I Me like, too. Love the game. I've I mean, always not, liked it. I'm not very lucky when it comes to like drawing random tags. You know, I haven't drawn random tags in my lifetime really that were like kind of out of the blue. I've drawn one. Have you? Oh, a sheep tag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's a big 2012 one. 2012. That's New a Mexico desert sheep. That's a pretty big one. Two years into what I was doing. Wow. Yeah. So talk uh, about. I mean, talk I always try to tell people I'm I'm unlucky in the draw too, and then you know my close friends would be like, "You motherfucker, you have no idea." Yeah, <laughs> like I, I did draw a sheep tag. Yeah, I mean, I I, I drew an elk tag in Utah last year, but I you know I cashed my points and on. You knew, it. yeah, you were chasing. Uh, I, yeah, I knew I knew I was going to draw yeah. that, but I still seeing that successful in the emails, mm-hmm. pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Yep, I love that. Yep. How do you, how do you approach some of these states that have just random odds? Uh, random, random strategy? meaning no point system at yeah. all. Um, so there's a couple, right? New Mexico, I should say a couple that jumped to mind, right? So New Mexico and Idaho are kind of the big ones. Big ones, yep. Um, New Mexico, I think is still relatively cheap to apply in because you only have to buy the hunting license, which is like 65 bucks plus your app fees, just I think 13 per species. And you do have to front the cost of all those that you apply for the licenses. 
So I I don't apply for everything in New Mexico because I just simply can't. And I want to get into this too. Budget. I want to talk about budget and like how you guys handle budget. I just be I'd be curious because what I'm doing isn't working. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'm on the same one as you. You are. Yeah. Is it the one where your credit card company is calling and like, hey, (laughs) they hold it for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. And some some states like Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah. I mean, they hold that thing for months. You know. So there's there's something there. We'll talk about budget here in a sec, but um. Like I said, I, I apply for like deer, elk, and antelope. Do you do you go like stuff you're not going to obtain and just shoot for the stars, or are you like trying to find a hunt you can get this year? Um, because you can play around in that, like mm-hmm. just keep shooting for stars every year for a minimum fee, or you could get something obtainable, yeah, potentially obtainable. So f- New Mexico, you get three choices. I typically swing for the fences with the first choice, second choice, kind of middle of the road, and then a third choice. I still want a good hunt. I'm not driving to New Mexico to hunt some of those units, you know, where access is extremely mm-hmm. tough. The elk herd's low. So I'm not really including those as my third choice, even though odds are better. Is that because you apply in other states? Yeah, Pretty it much. is. Yeah. I mean, it's because I've got eight points in Colorado and yeah, can draw exactly. an elk tag there. I've got six in Wyoming. And you're just, again, weight there. weighing your option mm-hmm. is better spent in another state than a, maybe yeah one. if i do draw in new mexico right now like for this example this year if i do draw a tag in new mexico i want it to be a better tag than i could get with my eight points in colorado yep. or my six in wyoming yep. Yep. so that's kind of how i approach you know I, I don't apply for you know bighorn sheep you drew a bighorn sheep tag yep. right i mean i don't apply always i have but that was back that was back when yeah. the game was different yeah it was, so, it was yeah there was no game. right so in doing the research and kind of the cost benefit analysis, mm-hmm. there was no cap on non-resident to resident tag draw. So like there was just a, there was just a, I can't remember exactly the amount of sheep tags available for that year. I think it was 20 yeah, for the entire state, but there was no cap on non resident So theoretically a non-resident, non-residents could draw all 20. Hmm. And if I remember correctly, the vast majority of the year that I drew my tag was all non-residents like very few went actually to residents hmm. and they have since changed that law where now residents get i think it's 90 10 or maybe it's 80 something know, like that I'd can't remember the exact but there is a cap on non-residents now mm-hmm. so back when i was applying for it um, i mean i saw it as just a complete lottery why not like why yeah. not there is no no one has more preference points than me no resident has priority over me like we're all in the same pool let's let's do it one thing i will say about so that's why I applied. states like that if you've got the credit card money, if you've got that money in a bank account with a debit card, apply for any and all. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> you never agree. know. Never I mean, know. If, if you can float $10,000 on your credit card or a debit card for the state of New Mexico, why not? I mean, it's a random draw. You might as well. Yep. I, and, I, there, and there's something to be said that it is that expensive. You don't have the entire public. Doing yeah, that, right. That's just the reality of it. It's just reality. Yeah, that's that's what I wish. For orcs and bighorn yeah. sheep and and everything the same year. That's what I kind of got disappointed in when Montana switched it when you used to have mm-hmm. to front all it for the for the big three and yeah. now it just opens up more. The state's obviously getting more money because now they're getting more fees from more, more people. people. But back then you had to be really serious when you applied for the big species and it yeah. kind of made the odds a little bit better for the serious people. Now everyone's brother, grandma, friend, cousin is all applying for it. Same with Colorado when you used to have to write your check and yeah. fill write out your, your paper application yep. paper app was a big deal go. Mm-hmm. do you think states should go back to that oh, is that just going to make our results come back longer and hold our money more <laughs> or more time? I couldn't afford it I it was always, it always scared me back in the day when I was applying Colorado filling it out because I was so nervous I was yeah. messing I something like up it. and they tossed my app out I like the level game I like the level playing field you mean or the way the way it is now? You mean? Yeah, yeah, or the generals. Yeah, can everybody apply. gets a chance. It's better for the state for conservation. It's better yeah, for the money. Pittman money. fund that they can tap mm-hmm. into. It's better for all. It's better for, you know, like mm-hmm. there's already the stigma that hunting's becoming a rich man's game. If if all the states started, you know, it gets expensive quick. Oh, well, yeah. well, and here the thing, I w- it would be interesting to go back and look, but like statistically, how much better could would the odds have been then versus now? I mean, yeah. m- maybe the I don't know. I don't Something know what they said. I drew a sheep tag, <laughs> you, you drew but <laughs> I mean that's an anecdotal little piece of. Yeah, but somebody's going there. to draw that sheep tag yeah, every year. And somebody's going to drop the moose tag, in, and and it know. so happened to be me. It was yeah. yeah, and and it wouldn't have been if you hadn't applied. Exactly. P- point being, you applied. Yeah. Yep. How do you guys approach budget? Cause I think that's probably like the next step for me is to like think about my budget. Yeah. I'll tell you how I approach it. I have a credit card. I put things on my credit card. I try to pay it off throughout the year. 
you know, I, I probably end up paying a shit ton more in interest than I do, you know, but it's just the facts. Like it's important to me. That's where I've got some money to put it into, you know, to yep. applications. And that's kind of how I do it. But I'm pretty much the same. Way. Is that what you like, do? I know what I want to apply for. I know every year is going to be a, a hurt, but I have to do it because I want that potential to draw one of these tags. Like mm-hmm. I don't go crazy into Mexico. I literally just do, you know, deer and Audad. Mm-hmm. I don't do really anything else. I probably should because I'm already deep in credit card, like burning mm-hmm. a hole in my pocket anyway. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's some states I, I just will not do because I don't think it budget it doesn't fit, and I don't see the long run of building a point in a certain state. So I avoid that on my app completely and totally washed away certain states. Never will apply there. Yeah, yeah. But I know this time of year it's like it's going to be heavy in the credit card, so I got to watch what I spend in other areas to keep these apps going and keep the money floating out there. Yeah. There's always that chance. Do you yeah. put everything on a credit card then? Credit card, yeah. Just one do or do you have multiple? I just have to do it on one, yeah. I've always thought about trying to figure out if it's beneficial to do it a separate one and try to figure out low, you know, mm-hmm. what rates I can get on some other yeah. stuff. But Do you do anything special with, like, the card that you get? Do you, I know people are big on, you know, like Alaska Airlines card, for example, where mm-hmm. they build miles on their purchases. Do you do anything like that? M- mine's pretty good about I get airline miles and okay. I get quite a bit of them, but I'm also thinking about a cashback card would probably be a little bit better for – and app based card mm-hmm. like i've always thought that alaska one but i don't really go up to alaska that often i'm not like you might if you yeah. had miles i know I yeah <laughs> no shit it's a pretty cool place yeah yeah but getting one of those cards like that would be beneficial especially you yeah. know build the, build those miles and you get that free what is it free flight a, mm-hmm. is there still a free flight a year in alaska airlines i don't know i don't I thought, I thought yeah i thought back in the day Neville has a, one. yeah so i think is that one free thing or something like with your card That'd like be incredible. i love alaska airlines too I mean, big shout out Alaska Airlines. It's incredible. I've never had an issue on Alaska. And yeah, in Vegas, great. little local trick here. Alaska's at a Terminal 3, which is way easier to fly out of. Dead. No lines, no nothing. Yeah. It's incredible. You don't have to go through the bullshit of the That's true. normal terminal. Every That's time I've flown go from to. Alaska. I yeah. always look, if I'm going somewhere, I always look at Alaska first. Yeah. I do think you have to be realistic, though, like with what you apply for. Yeah. I mean, you can't absolutely apply for it. I mean, some people can. If you can, great. Go for it. I think you should. I'm the asshole that can. I think yeah. it's great. And it, Yeah. I mean, I I have two credit cards. I have a primary. I have an American Express for my everyday life. And then I have a secondary card, Visa, for every like all my interesting stuff, right? A lot of states don't take Amex. So mm-hmm. I have a Visa card, very um, I can't remember which one it is. My brother-in-law is like the most well-versed person on the planet with credit cards. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh God. We he should knows get everything. him on the podcast. He knows everything about. We actually we should. Yeah. Really. Yeah, like, there is knows. probably something we're not doing. Oh, I mean, honest, honest to God, some, he something plays like this that would be game. would be great. Actually, that's a that was a really good idea. He knows like all the ins and outs. So, anyways, I have this visa. I can't remember which one it is. Um, which I apply for New Mexico, mm-hmm. and I apply for um, my whole thing right now is my son. And where he's at in his life. So my it, it's time based for me. So like depending on which why I'm applying for in that state, when the hunt is that I'm potentially trying to draw all this stuff, right? Um, it, but I have that secondary visa that I apply for all the states on, gotcha. and I just l- let that one sit, and then my so I can manage my day to day life on my Amex, mm-hmm. and gotcha. then I have this one that's for essentially hunting hunting more than anything else yeah and one little tip putting things on a credit card some states like utah you know you can kind of get your draws your results back by checking your credit card that's one nice thing about if you've got the money to put it on a debit card because your debit card typically updates so quickly right so as soon as that credit yeah as soon as that charge hits you can check your account you know that you i'm always jealous (laughs) of the people that know a couple days in advance because of that yep I've thought about doing it, but then you have to set up a whole other bank account with that money in it. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. credit card is pretty easy. I'm Visa's always nervous nice. too during the app season to make sure my credit card doesn't like. Oh. If I get a new credit card number, like what am I going to do for these apps? Is That's that the one app downfall out? of the my system because it's my secondary card. So like I'm not up on it all the time, yeah. right? Like I'm mm-hmm. not not looking at it all the time. I'm not like making sure it's paid off, making sure it's this, making sure it's that. So every year come application season i'm like calling is everything good yep got my current billing yep okay you gotta like get it all situated again yeah and you there's know? some states that if you draw a permit and your card is rejected see you later there arizona's one of them you know you if later. they try to charge your card and it doesn't work it's yep. expired or there's some issue with it they just reject it and move on to the next person yep. so 
You definitely have to make sure that your card is up to date and, and ready to go. Yeah. But speaking of like the, the New Mexico float and all that stuff, man, like what an opportunity to be able to go hunt some of those animals. Oh yeah. I mean, where, where else can you hunt? And that's I, what I see <laughs> is the cost benefit analysis is like, mm -hmm. look, is it, is it painful to, yeah, of course. I mean, fuck, how is that not painful? But I see it as a realistic opportunity and it's a short term pain for mm -hmm, potentially yep. something I'll be able to do. Yeah. And New Mexico is a, li a little bit better to turning around they are their, their results and they getting you a refund than in a state like Wyoming is. Yeah. Yeah. Or Montana, right? You got to front the, the yep. big game combo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah, it, always, it always makes me wonder why. Well, that, what's that so big long. game combo? 1,212? Yeah. Plus. It's, it's over it's, th it's thousand. thousand something. Yeah. It's a lot. But it's I like, don't apply. I don't apply there. I don't do that one. You have a state like Nevada that turns and burns them in now almost a week, it seems like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nevada's quick. Yeah, I um, I'm not a big fan of, I'm not a big fan of states that require you to front the cost of the entire licenses that you apply for. It's just hard on me, you know. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're applying for your kids and yeah, my kid. Oh man, I can't imagine that. Yeah, like you honestly, <laughs> I know that's and believe me, I'm I've had those yeah. like thoughts in my mind. I'm like, God, I spend, this is crazy, right? And then want to get my son, my wife. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Holy shit! I don't apply my wife in New Mexico. Don't tell her. <laughs> yeah, you know, like it, yeah. it gets expensive. Th that's why it's useful though to jump in and figure out when so many states do post the results and when you might get your refund back, because then you can mm -hmm. turn around and use that money you got from the refund, apply it towards another state right away. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And when I say not a big fan, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I still apply where it makes sense. You know, yeah. I still apply my kids where it makes sense for me and what I can afford. It's just it's it's a necessary evil, if you will. I mean, and and if you wanna, you wanna draw a tag, you wanna go hunting. It's just part of the process. It's just how much it matters to you. Yeah. How do you put weight on some states that you might just completely avoid? How do you determine which ones you're just going to cross off? And Montana's like, oh. for me. That's Montana's that for me. Yeah. I was in school there. I hunted Montana a lot. Was, I love Montana. Everything about it, honestly. Um, but just. It's a long way from Nevada. It, there's That's the way I see it is there are more and, in my opinion, better hunts closer to me than Montana. Yeah, if you're a resident, it'd be a little bit different. Totally, you different. could grind up because that's a lot of weeks. If I lived northern Utah, if I lived, you know, Wyoming, yeah. if I yeah. lived any of that stuff, yeah. of course, you have a six week archery, five week rifle season, oh, and all the other opportunities. So it's you can amazing. go more to make but it that, official. So that doesn't that doesn't entice me at this stage in my life though with my son yep. and my family and the business and it's it's that's too much freedom for me. Mm -hmm. My God, fuck it up. I would I would get in a bad spot. My son would hate me. Who knows what would happen with Porter? <laughs> this showroom would turn into a Lululemon store. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what would happen? Yes, uh, Porter. Love you, Porter. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, that's too much freedom for me. I, I'm not attracted to that at this point in my life. There will be a time that that's entirely what I'm looking for. Yep. Um, but that that state is, is off the list for me. That's just, I don't apply there. Hmm. Yeah, for me, it's uh, it's a cost benefit. So a state like Washington or Oregon, I just mm -hmm. don't feel like the hunts that I could draw are justifiably better you know for the points that i would have to and the cost i would have and to get a long ways a away and a long ways away yeah and even the over-the-counter stuff there like you could potentially go do that but again could you have better hunts closer to home yeah and where you're at and we're fortunate to live in the west so it's a little oh, easier yeah. to go to some of these places yeah do you see do you see your money better spent let's just say like take budget out right mm -hmm take travel and time out would you apply in oregon washington or would you try to pick up like maybe a hunt lease on a whitetail you know back east somewhere there's there's some species i might apply for really yeah yeah um but, but in saying that I, I i mean okay so if i had all the money in the world and the time i would i'm not saying all all the money in sure, the world because okay. that makes everything yeah, like, yeah of course you would do it yeah. why not do it i'm just saying you're still budgeting but you had you 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 were mm -hmm. enough to like mm -hmm. you were going hunting. I I would put it on a white tail lease. <laughs> exactly. That's what I see. There, yeah. That's so and some of this like cost benefit. Yeah. I'm like man, if I could, if I ever get to I would put all these states all, I would rather pick up a really good white tail lease yeah. or like a really good white tail spot. Yeah, I would put it would into do. a plane ticket and a tag for caribou in Alaska. Or that or, or that or exactly. Moose, or could, black could you tail. Yeah. could you not apply for all the sheep species in the West and just go or moose we'll do moose for example, not apply for all the moose hunts and just go book a hunt. Yeah. In BC. For sure. And this like, is eventually 
20 some years down the road, if you, all those app fees, it's not going to equal that hunt, but it's going to come close to it. And you're never, sure. you're never guaranteed the to thing draw is, that though, down is here. We talk again, right? We talk points. That's years of your life. So like, yep. it's not just the money. It's the entire year cycle of things you gained, lost life changes thing. It's, it's just mm -hmm. different. It's really mm -hmm. different than just banking it and saying, I'm doing it this year. Everything's planned around it. It's done. Right. Yep. Like it's, yeah. Yep. I mean, in my opinion, right you do start to, in the cost benefit analysis is you i start going down that path too with some of these states and their applications is it worth it is it not where do i live are there hunts better or is there an, something entirely different that i can just front the money to go do now like the caribou alaska which mm -hmm. i haven't done or moose alaska which i haven't done or whitetail which i have done right mm -hmm. like i've i've started to find my money better spent on some whitetail stuff especially some of these other states uh, applications especially if your friend is on the same board as you and you guys now pool your money together to go 100%. do 100 percent. what i've been doing with clay hill for the last couple of years yeah mm -hmm. we've done kansas we've done texas i mean it's yep. i've found my money better um, spent there i i wouldn't even say like more enjoyably spent mm -hmm. doing that something to bank on set dates that that's where my mind is is in my life right now is set dates plan around it best friend like that kind of stuff mm -hmm. you know what i mean what do you think your favorite tool is on Insider that you use the most in this time of year? Obviously, you're heavily invested in app strategy, so I know that's a good baby, yeah. and definitely people need to check that out. But mm -hmm. maybe besides for that, what yeah. Do you so, mean? so, so mine might be a little, a little bit different, and and I say that because of the uh, the level of experience that I've have maybe versus some other people. I mean, you have to understand that, like you and I, I live in that realm every day. Yep. <laughs> like I've looked at a map of I, I could. I could probably draw you a map of the elk units in Wyoming better than I could and label them better than I could the states in the United States. Like I don't doubt that. I, <laughs> like, <at all. laughs> like really I could, I've just, I've looked at that state. I've looked a lot of the states, right? Yeah. Utah, New Mexico, all of them. So for me, um, I kind of know the ins and outs of like the units and what they offer. I even kind of have a decent understanding of what a hunt might be like in that. So I actually, I use draw odds a, sh a shit ton. Standalone draw odds. Sta standalone draw odds. And that's, that's like one that I use a ton right now because I'm going to populate my points. I'm just going to quickly run down through those standalone draw odds and I'm going to pick the four or five that are within my realm. And then I'm going to start kind of looking at those individual ones, you know, like, okay, maybe that one might be the one, you know, I'm going to mm -hmm. start doing some research on those individual hunts, but I yeah, would put say them into your hunt planner and start bouncing back and yeah, forth and on that's, comparisons. And that's something we should talk about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I find would, myself I, doing that a lot. I would say standalone draws is a big one for me, but that may not necessarily be the case for everybody because if you're new to hunting, you don't have this huge, you know, breadth of understanding of all the individual units and what they might offer in terms of trophy potential and terrain and harvest success and all that stuff. Um, you know, you may start with filtering 2.0 mm -hmm. just because it's easy. Yep. And the nice thing too, about like, you can do draw odds on filtering 2.0. Mm -hmm. You can. But like you said, for you and I, I think we both are cut from the same cloth in that regard. Like we use standalone draw odds quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And that's a separate area on the website. Like I said, you can do draw odds on filtering 2.0, but the standalone draw odds is very powerful and you can still filter out by a select season type. So if you don't want to see that giant list, when you jump into Colorado, and you just want to see archery, you can like the archery season and boom now you're just looking at the archery ones and yep. it's going to throw your point in there in the middle and you can easily see your point level all the way down because you have all that stuff entered in from point tracker and like you said that was the next thing i wanted to get into which i was glad i got a couple things up. i want to get into but you the hunt planner okay let me before we jump into hunt planner let me ask you about point creep oh buddy oh, oh. So every single year, oh, I, gar I guarantee yeah. you, you get DMs, I yep. get DMs, you get DMs. You probably <laughs> yes. don't get DMs. You get emails, I bet. <laughs> I'm not on social, but yes. <laughs> but um, I, get, I get scathing text messages. <laughs> <laughs> somebody will say, I had eight points. Your draw had said 100% 100%. odds at eight points for this hunt. I didn't draw. Yep. What is the reason for that trail? What's the term? It's, point, it's called point creep. So it's it's essentially such what, a nasty term. Yeah, it is. Creep, right? Yeah. It's one creepy. of the best songs out there, though. It is a good song. I just listened to that the other day, actually. It's a great song. Yeah. Anyway, point creep, pretty simply explained, is you've got less permits than there are. No, did I say that wrong? You, you, you're going to go there. I'm creeping myself <laughs> out right here. So you have more applicants than there are permits for a hunt, right, yep. in a point system. So let's take Colorado, for example. Let's say you've got five permits. 
you've got 10 people at max points that are all kind of vying for those five permits, right? And five of them are going to draw. So that same hunt the next year is going to take one additional point to draw. Yep, because you have more people with higher point levels jumping in who are now going to get those tags where typically it was five points, but now you might have had a bunch of guys who had six, seven, eight who decided just to yep. just want to burn their points and want to get out of the point system. And so they're jumping in on that hunt, which is creeping that point up because now it's taking more points to draw. Yep. So it's essentially, it's just this creep in points. It's a hunt takes one additional point or two additional points. Depends on how people apply, right? Yep. Um, so that's what, what point creep is. Um, how do you tell people to use draws in regards to point creep? That's the best way to do it is to literally jump on standalone draw odds. You can see your point level throughout the years and you can look at the points it's taking to draw and how many people are applying and how many people didn't draw potentially. And then you can take that into account. Like, okay, there was X number of people who applied and didn't draw. Now that's going to be on top of this number this year. Mm -hmm. And then you can say, well, it's been creeping up one point every year and there's still a base number of people. So it's going to be now an additional point next year. And you can kind of look at that trend throughout that data. And I think that's why you and I both use standalone draws all the time. You can yep. predict basically point creep on there, especially when you can see some of those permit numbers going down and the still those app numbers are going up. You can predict there's going to be creep there. Yeah. So you have to look into that account. That's why the hard part though is you can never fully predict. No, you can never fully predict. You got the sure. a holes out there because <laughs> it could jump a lot. Like my dad, for example, like, with God his dang max, it. with can his you guys just stop doing that with his giant points. Too. He's going to eventually jump into a lower unit. That's going to yeah. create that point creep Created. in that yep. in that unit. And so you can't Papa fully Brady, predict man, it. He's one of the a-holes. Yep. So you can't predict odds. The odds, I don't know if people are aware, but we the odds that you're looking at on your GoHunt Insider account are not predicted odds. Yep. You can't predict you the You can't odds. predict an odds because I can't predict where people are going to apply with how many points because people jump, they don't apply. Do and how many people have been building points for all those years and now are going to finally apply in the point system? Yeah. Me in building. Arizona. Yeah. yeah, I'm one of those. A lot, of people, a lot of people in Wyoming. I've been, I've been mm -hmm. banking Montana. points, buying points, buying points, chasing that one thing. It's on the downswing. I'm so, going to burn them. And you can tell sometimes, too, when you have trends in, like, winter kill stuff. All of a sudden, you have winter kill one year. People mm -hmm. are going to be scared to apply for the next mm -hmm. couple of years, and all of a sudden, the herd numbers might get back up, and they're going to jump in. And mm -hmm. you can see that, like, see in Wyoming, Wyoming this year, last mm -hmm. year yeah. we saw it. Yeah, so we don't predict draw odds. What we do is we provide a uh, the known information, so the number of applicants – the number of points that each applicant had that applied and the odds based on the last draw, which is known data. That's yeah. hard data. And then you're saying you can go into these detailed draw odds pages for each hunt that you're considering. And there's going to be five years of data within yep. that. So you can see the number of applicants at each point level and where permits were allocated. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can use those and it takes a little bit of like, yep. That's where we always say like there's tools and insider, but if you use these tools together and mm -hmm. then look at the bigger picture of an individual unit in the detailed draw odds page, which is not the standalone one where you see all the units, you get to click into an indiv individual unit yep. and then you get to the detail page where you can see those numbers. Yep. So, so understand, understand that if you're going to, you're going to look at draw odds, you've got to, you got to do a little bit of work. We've, you've got an article on point creep and yep. how it works and how to use the detailed draw odds page to help you predict point creep. Mm -hmm. Typically I tell people, if you don't want to try to wrap your head around this, look at the point level one or two less than what you currently have. And that might put you in the ballpark, yep. but ideally it's best to look at the detailed draw odds pages. And when do we get this the most? Wyoming elk. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's always creeping. Yeah. Wyoming elk. 17 years deep. Do you guys yeah, believe that? That is crazy. 17 years deep. Their preference point system. It's crazy. Yeah. That happened quick. Yeah. It did. <laughs> it did it happened huh? real quick. Yeah. How do you guys dictate your time spent? I mean, what are you looking at this year as far as, I mean, ideally I think we'd all like to hunt as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, how do you navigate that with like work, family? Is that something that you guys think about when you're looking at your hunt schedule for it's the year? The, the, my first thing I think about. The first thing? Yep. Like with where my life is now with the business and my family. Mm -hmm. That's the, it's the very first thing I look at. So that's why I like that structured what am I after? What am I looking for? That's why Arizona is top of my mind is, okay, I, I can I can guarantee where, where I'm going to land, you know, essentially guarantee where I'm going to land here, hunt with the best friend these dates. Here's what I'm looking at. Um, you're right. So I've been chasing coos deer in Arizona, and I have a I have a pile of points if that's what I'm chasing, but I just haven't been able to catch the one hunt I'm after because of the a-holes that mm. keep jumping in. <laughs> so 
thought I was close there for a little bit while the unit was on a on a streaking path, which would have been awesome. But hey, it's the way it goes. Um, so my the first thing I'm looking at is like, okay, what that that's where I'm willing to burn my points. I know some other hunts that I have been interested in, and now I'm like very interested in. Pick the dates, get with my friend, do it, and that's where I'm that's where I'm situated. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Mm-hmm. Like that's what I'm looking for first and foremost is like that guaranteed one for this year mm-hmm. that's where i start yeah do you um at home you're married mm-hmm. is taylor pretty good about cutting your time off to go on that's why i married her <laughs> yeah that's so do you do you run that past do you guys work strategies out together when you when you're working through that i have an amazing in-law group on her side mm-hmm. and uh yeah i mean i it's my responsibility as a husband and father i mean sure. I, I have responsibilities in life to like yeah. make sure everything's situated but i do have that that um back the yeah back a backup thing. yeah you yeah know? yeah so backing like, yeah support group <laughs> so i can you know i've i've dropped some quick ones on her mm-hmm. when an opportunity has popped up of you know turn back tag leftover tag somebody whatever yeah. um but yeah she's that's why i married her she's yeah. amazing yeah i mean i'm 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 lucky in that uh i think from the get-go it was kind of known i yeah. made it known <laughs> i made it known too yeah that like this is really important to me i was going to be doing a lot of this and then you know also working here and worth it within yeah you know the industry we have a lot of time off to hunt but i would say i talk to you i talk to people all the time that like either have you know strained relationships strained jobs you know for hunting so i would say plan plan ahead plan early that's what it's yeah, all and about that's a communication ma- communication yeah ma- it's a major one. consideration that yeah. you need to make before yeah there's a common i get such a common misconception all the time of like you know meeting new people you have a business in the hunting industry and Mm -hmm. uh, oh you must be able to hunt a ton actually no like i there's a lot of you know relatively speaking i mean do i get to hunt more than most yeah because it's it is essentially part of the job but at the same time like this is you know this is my whatever Mm -hmm. you want to call it um so it's like yeah, you're it, not just out there hunting on no, your own the all the time. No, the priority is my family and this, and then that's where I find the time for the rest of it. So, like, you know, there's different levels of I fully understand some people get one week off, two weeks off. That is vastly different from us. But we are still very focused on priority first, and then where does a hunt fit mm-hmm. you know, secondarily to that. So it's kind of the same boat, just in a different level. And we even balance it internally at the office, like yeah. trying, to, trying to be gone at the same time so we yeah. can make sure. I know, it's just such a bummer. Content <laughs> has to go out every single day. Content never sleeps. I know, Lorenzo and Porter, they have to figure their schedules out. So <laughs> somebody's here, Brady and I. You know, yeah. This is the first year ever Porter and I hunted together. Yeah. Like out of the office, truly out of the office together. See how okay everything stays? Yeah. yeah see? It's pretty see? Good. <laughs> it was still floating. Just kidding. I pretty don't know. Good. Maybe maybe about burned out <laughs> we were gone. <laughs> We won't know if that's the <laughs> truth, but yeah, maybe potentially that's maybe the case. everybody else just took the entire week off, but we don't even <laughs> I, know it. I don't doubt it. <laughs> Roll the tape. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything oh. else you guys think about in terms like get ready for application season? Hmm. Anything else that strikes a chord with you? I mean, those are kind of the big ones for me as I think about it. Um, as I put a plan in place, it's typically, you know, what's my priority? What do I want to hunt? Uh-huh. Is it? points driven is it species driven yep. uh to know where your points are if you don't have any points that's okay you can still go hunting but build points build points yeah. start now build i points. can tell you what's a quick second in my mind behind like that the one i'm chasing or the one i want to do for that year mm-hmm. like the one i set my sights on is what can i take my son well like where yeah. can i take my son so every year since i've had him um and i've been able to hunt with him it's always mm-hmm. okay i have this one now i need to find one an opportunity hunt that I can take him on, right? Yep. So a lot yep. of late season deer, window time, um, see a lot of animals. I don't give a shit what we kill. Um, yeah, you and you, you bring up a good point. I just finished a, an insider article where I'm gonna I outlined kind of youth opportunities in the western states. We'll release Wyoming and Arizona first. And yep, then that one's actually dropping today while we're recording. This. Okay, yeah, nice. and then and that's specific to youth. Yep. Um, you know, I've got two kids that are hunting age. It's actually funny. I started, a lot of states give, you know, either permits or uh, cost breaks on youth tags. So, like, my oldest kid, he's 17. This will be the last year in Wyoming. Does that make you feel old? Yeah. 17. It's, it's pretty old. Yeah, when I, when I, wow. I mean, 
he had a game last night and went to the game, watched him play, and I was, you know, he was hanging out with all his buddies after the game, and I was like, I'm, I'm old. Has <laughs> <laughs> he got a beard yet or what? I mean, he's, he's coming. He's pr- probably probably about like mine. It's going to end up being kind of sparse, but <laughs> can't win them all. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like this is the last year that he will be, you know, a youth in a state like Wyoming. So I'm actually piggybacking his points. That's oh. smart. Yeah, so I've been buying him preference points. What a good dad. <laughs> Out of state. Gosh. Show him the ropes. But, but yeah, I, you know, I've, I've been picking, I'm going to piggyback his points because he wanted to go on an elk hunt this year. I'll be able to draw a tag when he and I party app together. You know, I can go up and bow hunt and then I can take him back on a rifle hunt. And, That's super and he cool. Can, he yeah. Can go on an elk That's hunt. awesome. So, yeah, I would say, you know, check out those. I mean, I, those are kind of a pet project for me, if I will, because it's good Cause research. Because yeah. I got kids, yeah. you know, that are hunting age. So I thought, what's why, fun for why, me is why not put these together for yeah, other people? What's, what's fun for me is to go to the drawing board of like, what's just a hunt, like what, like an opportunity mm-hmm. that is good for a three and a half year old. Now he'll be four and a half next year. But like, what? It's fun to kind of go find that that opportunity where I don't give a shit what we kill. I just want to make sure we see some animals and get something killed with them, yep. whatever it be, elk, deer, antelope. I don't care. Um, and it's it's fun to like go find that with him. I think a cow elk hunt, a doe antelope yeah. hunt, doe mule yeah. deer, whitetail, doe. And we have we have draw odds. We, I mean, we didn't touch about it, but we cover draw odds for all antler species antler list, in all, this, all the yeah. states. Those are great first hunts. Exactly, perfect I mean, hunts. I love hunting. I love hunting a big mature buck or bull, right? But you know what's a ton of fun? Like a January cow elk tag, where, late season where cow, any baby. cow will do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that that's yeah. fun. You're just out. Isn't a calf with you though? Yeah, it's a calf yeah, with yeah. me. Any calf will do, I should say. <laughs> they but eat better. They do eat better. <laughs> but those are fun hunts and I don't know I mean people I'm don't, learning. A lot of people don't talk about it really. No. I find myself ju- like just as much chasing this other stuff I got fourteen points for. Like uh, doing something with my kid like that. Just mm-hmm. to make sure he's with me. Like what is a hunt I can do with him yep. with me? And it's a lot of stuff like that. And taking the youth on those sounds perfect too. How, learning them, learning how to react to a situation, how you stalk, how you use the wind, how you lay behind a gun and get calm. Yep. Take that. I'll never shot. get tired like, of saying it. There's only one way of get, uh, uh, getting good at killing. Only one way. Killing. Just got to keep killing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get out there and get after it. But yeah. And then finally, I guess I would conclude is just like, um, you know, don't, don't be intimidated. Like don't talk yourself out of it. You know, it's it's going to take some work. It's going to take effort, and and it it will be ever evolving. It it will be evolving, but I, I promise you, all the tools, all the tricks, all the information is within your account. It's right there. It's built to give you everything that you would possibly need. Just do yourself a service. Dig in and do the research. Just go at it. Yeah, and yeah. research is like, I don't know. It's a weird word. Nobody wants to go do research. Kind of you feels think like back in college, college days. Yeah. yeah, I don't. But this wanna, is this is different though. Yeah, this is fun research. Yeah, because it's it going to result in. Well, you're playing a game too. Like, yeah, you can win this game. Let's oh, I love this. Start game. playing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't. It's like I said earlier in the podcast. I don't gamble, but this is the closest. I don't play fantasy football. This is what I. Do. Yeah. W- would you rather sit there and watch Netflix at night, or jump on your phone and read some abstract articles and learn I don't about? Know. It? Depends what's on Netflix. Depends on how tired I am. That's money you can use for what time did my son go to bed? Was it easy to put him down? Uh, that's where Is it before goes. eight o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I love I, it's it's not just research, man. It's the game, and figuring out this game is fun. Like always finding these little these little things. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, and drawing a great permit is super fun. Oh, the days of results come out, and the office is all just a buzz. Yeah. Those are some of my favorite days. Those are my favorite days. You know when some result hits, and yeah. you know everybody in the office is like, "Hey, do an elk tag in Nevada." You know, everybody yep. kind of gets hyped in, starts giving information, and offering I love ideas. That. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. Your phone starts blowing up. Yeah, you know, all your buddies. Hey, did you hear about Jeff? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. believe what Jeff drew? <laughs> yeah, those are those are fun. One more thing we got to talk about. Yeah, which we haven't. We've never publicly talked about. This we thing. haven't. What? This will be the first time. Hunt planner. Oh yeah. So we've had this on the website. We suck at marketing. But yeah. yeah. So we have content a s- team, not marketing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Shots God. fired. <laughs> yeah, we suck. <laughs> Which we're going to do some full-on marketing here coming up on it. So it's a perfect time here to talk about it right now. But we have a section of the website called Hunt Planner. We're going to move that over into the tools here eventually so it's easier to find. But right now it's just on the upper right-hand corner. If you're on a computer, hover over your name. It's a little pop drop-down menu, Hunt Planner. You click that. Basically, before you go to that, though, like we've always had, you know, when you look at filtering 2.0, there's a million units. You find that one sick unit that you want to 
keep researching, but we didn't have a way to save it for future reference. Mm -hmm. So now you'll see under all those different seasons in the filtering 2.0, that middle column, there'll be a little save button. You can start tapping that save. You'll tap that save, a little window will pop up. You can create a hunt. So you can label it whatever, like Wyoming Elk 2023 Research, whatever it might be. So now every time you save those hunts on there, it's going to go under that little folder. And you can start going through that list, save those results that you want, jump over <clears throat> to your hunt planner. You'll be able to have that little folder right there. You can mm -hmm. click on that folder. Now you can see those seasons broken out, all the different numbers. What's the bull cow ratio? What's the public land? What's the trophy start potential? Start truly what's, comparing them. Yep. What's the draw odds going to be? And then the special part too, you can add notes to all those different seasons. So you can start to whatever sort of research you find on the unit profiles or app strategy. Maybe you can even drop links in there from app to app strategies to start creating your own personal hunting portfolio mm -hmm. in in there. And then also you can sort those units. Let's say there's alphabetical. I want to re-rank them. I want that unit as my number one I'm going to apply for. This is going to be my number two choice, so on and so forth. And then you can also drop over to a separate note page, and it says a blank note area where you can drop anything you want there as well. And there's a little menu bar or a little link in the middle of that that's like similar seasons. Whatever filtering setting you had prior, you click on that link, it's going to take you right back to those exact same filters. So let's say you had all that public land percentage, your draw odds percentage, trophy potential, and now memorizes those last search results so you can instantly jump back to what you're looking at before to dive in yep and you can name it whatever you can customize the little <clears throat> logo at the top if you want to put an elk on there it's like super cool and very valuable to compare all these different seasons yeah for that hunt you're going to go on so yeah, it's like that note section is awesome because i mean a lot of us we could do a lot of research within our account but also we a lot of us have networks you know we're talking to people hey you've hunted this unit before exactly that's just a, a spot that you can organize and put that kind of information in there and you can really start to rank it and plan it. And mm -hmm. then you can start to plan your hunt. I mean, you pull in maps. Yep. There's a link in there to open up maps right away. Yeah. So you can start to drive the into The hopes that. and dreams for this is to take away my notepad. <laughs> We're going to get you there. <laughs> That's what this is for. That's okay. what it's supposed to be for. And it's cool too because you can just jump in there on a random state and like you can start planning on something for the future and just start saving those units. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like you, you, you have extra, extra time and you want to start doing that? Like, it's a great resource to utilize, and that's a new insider feature that we rolled out. Yeah, prior to that, you know, Endpoint Tracker, I had a spreadsheet, and, you know, every year I would go back and visit the hunts that I applied for, and it's just, it makes it so much easier. So much easier. Even, yeah, like I said, you get back from a hunt, you have a bunch of thoughts on how that mm -hmm. hunt went. Jump into Hunt Planner, go to that season level, drop your notes in there. What you saw, what you experienced, that could be useful for your son when he wants to draw it maybe by himself or like my yeah, brothers when they want to go yeah mm -hmm. i have notes i can share with them well good deal so i'm i'm ready to apply me too i can't mm -hmm. wait so remember after listening to this whole thing and you made it this far <laughs> use code podcast 100 get yourself 100 points back in the go hunt gear shop when you sign up for insider it'll benefit you this year put more tags in your pocket mm -hmm. utilize the tools we just talked about and in the future too i mean yeah, and sign, I mean, sign up for it. I mean, essentially, you're, you're 149 bucks. You use the promo code PODCAST100. You get 100 bucks back to the Go Hunt gear shop. So for 50 bucks, you're getting Go Hunt maps. You're getting draw odds. You're getting filtering. You're getting all the information that you would need to get an over-the-counter hunt, to get a draw tag, just to Cow get, elk, a, to, to get a chance to go hunting. I mean, for 50 bucks, you can <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's tough to beat. Yeah. It's, it's, hey. I mean, it's the best 50 bucks yeah. spent. And that's, I mean, that's me, whether I worked here or not. Exactly. I mean, I got brothers that are, that, you know, they pay their members. It's, it's worth it. Yep. Yeah. We don't have a market adjustment here. <laughs> Same price. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah, that's app, app season kickoff. Yeah. I can't wait. That's a good man. one. It makes me fired wait. up. I know. Like I said, this I is. I just, I've. Such an so many, so much hopes and dreams going into. That. I feel like a degenerate gambler. It's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna win for sure. This is why you gamble. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I always think it's funny the amount. I mean, I would say a lot of the conversations that I have with people from January to May are discussing applications. Absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. Just with buddies. Hey, what are you applying for? Yeah. What are you gonna do here? You know, how was that hunt last year? Oh, I was yeah. thinking about doing that. So. Yep. There's a lot of those conversations being right, had. Right. It's it's exciting and like you said, I, I think besides hunting season it's it's my favorite. If you can't go hunting, you might as well just talk about it. <laughs> Plan for it. <laughs> Plan for it. Well said. Yeah. Well good luck. Get an insider account. 
And man, if you draw a good tag, let us know. Exactly. For sure. I love hearing when people can draw a good tag. Mm-hmm. Reach too. out. Get yep. a pump for them. Cool. All right. Appreciate you, boys. See ya.